We want to bring in the University of Virginia Center for Politics Director Larry Sabato is with us. Also, former South Carolina Senator and President of the Heritage Foundation Jim DeMint is with us. Good to see you both. Thank you so much for joining us. Maria, great to be with and you. And we're happy you're here on set. Sometimes we speak to you remote. It's nice it's, to have you in person. It's nice. Uh, so, so what do you think about all these commutations? Well, I haven't seen the whole list, uh, but I, I know Private Manning uh, violated uh, a lot of laws, and, and his commutation is going to demoralize a lot of military people who are trying to do things right. He jeopardized a lot of our secrets and, and probably uh, some, some lives of our servicemen. So I, I don't understand that one at all. Similar sentiment as uh, former colleagues uh, uh, Lindsey Graham and, and uh, John McCain. Larry Sabato, your thoughts? Well, you know, the Secretary of Defense uh, in President Obama's administration, Ash Carter, was apparently or reportedly opposed to this, as well as other uh, governmental and military leaders. So uh, the president has the right. The pardoning power is absolute, as we learned when uh, Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon or Bill Clinton pardoned Mark Rich. There have been a lot of controversial pardons over the years. But, yeah. uh, you know, this one, this one weakens the Democratic argument against WikiLeaks. You know, I thought we were in for a, a season of uh, using uh, the WikiLeaks uh, releases of documents concerning Hillary Clinton and the DNC and so on uh, to uh, go after uh, President Trump and go after the Republicans and suggest that, as one congressman recently did, that his presidency yeah. is illegitimate. I think that's a lot tougher uh, after this pardon. Yeah, I think this is a really good point, actually, and we're still waiting on the fate of Julian Assange as well. We want to move on to Obamacare. Mm -hmm. Obviously, on the chopping block, uh, President-elect Trump has said this is going to be one of his main priorities in the first 100 days. Republicans are working to repeal the health care law, but have yet to announce plans for a replacement. Uh, we have a report from the Congressional Budget Office, a senator that estimates at least 18 million people would lose health insurance in the first year if the Affordable Care Act is repealed without a replacement. And for the first time since 2009, more Americans actually it, it, it appears they are warming up to the idea of keeping Obamacare look at this Wall Street Journal NBC News poll it found 45 percent of Americans now say the law is a good idea 50 percent of the adults in that survey said that they had very little or no confidence that the GOP could replace the law with a better one what do you think about that senator well, CBO, Congressional Budget Office, has rarely been right. And they forecast that uh, many more people would actually get insurance through Obamacare, that it would cost less. All of these things have turned out not to be true. If you look at a full replacement plan, first of all, um, the repealing it is not going to change anything in the next two or three years. A transition is worked in. People will keep their insurance and their subsidies. But there's so many ways we can improve it to create a market where there are many more choices of health plans whether it's getting a tax deduction as an individual or buying insurance across state lines. And uh, if we're able to move those things through, which I'm convinced that they will under President Trump, uh, people will get a lot better health insurance than they have today. Well, health savings accounts, letting the states run the Medicaid program, the health care for the poor, block granting that back to the states, empowers them, getting rid of the frivolous lawsuits. There's so many great ideas out there. Ideas that, by the way, not only did Senator DeMint work on, but Tom Price has worked on for, for over a decade and many, many other members of Congress. And so I, I think the great thing, that the Dems are going to uh, slow walk the Price nomination because they know he's ready to hit the ground running. But with or without his nomination, and I think the House is going to repeal and replace and do it very quickly because so much of what they're talking about they've already well, you introduced. Can, you, in, the, in the Senate, you can repeal it with a simple majority, Senator, but you're going to need those 60 filibuster-proof votes in order to get a replacement plan mm -hmm. through. And so you've got to convince some Democrats that this is doable and it's right. Well, there's a process here, the re repealing it, which they can take down, as you said, with reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Tom Price can do a lot to fix things by taking apart a number of the regulations uh, that were, were put in place. And then on step-by-step, -step, uh, uh, Jack mentioned many of the things that we can do to improve this. And if Democrats uh, don't allow someone to buy an, a, a, a cheaper policy who lives in New Jersey, if they can buy one in Arizona, mm -hmm. if they start blocking this, I think America will 
see what's going on. And, and Donald Trump won big in some states with Democrat senators. Uh, I would be surprised if we put a good idea forward as, as conservatives on the outside and Republicans on the inside that, that they cannot pass some, uh, some really good uh, improvements to America's health care system. Why, why do you think it is so expensive? I mean, you know, the, the conversation we have all the time is as it relates to economic growth and business is turning full-time jobs into part-time jobs, you know, cutting jobs because of the expense of health care. Why is Obamacare as expensive as it is? We, re we need to realize we cannot manage a health care of over 300 million Americans from Washington. We, we need to push it back down. What do you uh, mean? The people all across the street aren't that smart? I'm, 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 well, I'm offended. Well, yeah. Jonathan Gruber said that that's how they pass it, right? Because we're stupid. But if, uh, Maria, yeah. if, if, if you have it where uh, if you don't have to buy insurance until you get sick, mm. uh, and, and if you put so many regulations on what everything has to cover, you've got young people having to cover things that old people need and vice yeah. versa, you, you need to let people buy the policies they want. Yeah, and as you've said so eloquently so many times, Dagan, do you want to have these decisions made by yourself or you want government bureaucrats to be yeah. making these right. important right. decisions? Right. The government runs Medicare, so the government runs health care for all the seniors in this country, and it's going broke in 11 years, and nobody wants to do anything about that. So why? The fact we, we're getting rid of an, an, of an entitlement is kind of astonishing. We've even seen with Medicare Advantage, uh, uh, private plans can come in and offer more than Medicare yeah. at lower price. And so there are a lot of ways we can improve this with competition. It's, it's not going to be that hard. The Democrats may want to block it, as they always have, uh, but we can give America affordable uh, uh, and affordable health insurance with yeah. many more choices. All right, we'll leave it there. Senator, great to see you. Good to see you. Thanks Maria. so much for joining us. Larry Sabato, Senator Jim DeMint, good to see you both, gentlemen. Thank you. Coming up, an NFL Hall of Famer helping to kick off a new presidency, a sneak peek behind the scenes at Jim Brown's pre-inauguration party, and then walking on the moon to strut